Breaking news in the Prop 8 case. Today, AFER's legal team filed its one and only ruling before the U.S. Supreme Court. It's an incredible record of the case so far and a preview of the argument that the team will make next month before the U.S. Supreme Court. Let's run through the brief and take a look at some of the highlights. At the American Foundation for Equal Rights, I'm Matt Baum, and welcome to a special episode of Marriage News Watch. The brief states, Quote, the only substantive question in this case is whether the state is entitled to exclude gay men and lesbians from the institution of marriage and deprive their relationships, their love, of the respect, dignity, and social acceptance that heterosexual marriages enjoy. Proponents have not once set forth any justification for discriminating against gay men and lesbians by depriving them of this fundamental civil right. The plaintiffs go on to list other past institutions that discriminated on the basis of gender or race. They write, the 14th Amendment could not tolerate these discriminatory practices, and it similarly does not tolerate the permanent exclusion of gay men and lesbians from the most important relation in life. The brief also runs through the history of the case from California's 2000 ban on marriage to the 2008 California Supreme Court ruling that overturned the ban, and then to the rebanning of marriage a few months later by Prop 8. It goes on to describe the district court's ruling in August of 2010, along with its key findings. Among those findings are that marriage has evolved from an institution defined by traditional and unbalanced gender roles. Instead, it's defined by commitment, partnership, cohesive family unit, and the liberty of spouses. The court also found numerous benefits available only through marriage. Psychological health, legal protection, and longer life. These are also benefits that flow to the couple's children. In short, the district court found multiple ways in which Proposition 8 is unconstitutional. First, it violates the Due Process Clause because it unconstitutionally burdens the exercise of the fundamental right to marry. And second, it violates the Equal Protection Clause because it creates an irrational classification on the basis of sexual orientation. And it does these things without serving any government interest. From there, the case went to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. The court found that the proponents couldn't explain how rescinding marriage supported any legitimate government interest. It, too, ruled that Prop 8 is unconstitutional. And now the case is before the U.S. Supreme Court. On page 13 of today's brief, the plaintiffs lay out their argument. First, they argue that the proponents shouldn't even be able to bring this case before the U.S. Supreme Court. They've never claimed to be injured by the overturning of Prop 8. This is the standing requirement, which they've failed to meet. Second, plaintiffs argue that Prop 8 violates the Due Process Clause because it denies gay men and lesbians the right to marry without furthering any legitimate government interest. This is a compelling argument because the U.S. Supreme Court has ruled 14 times that the right to marry is protected by the Due Process Clause and is a fundamental freedom for all Americans. Third, they argue that Prop 8 violates the Equal Protection Clause because its only purpose is to create an unequal status for gay and lesbian couples. The brief concludes that Prop 8 cannot be squared with the principle of equality and the unalienable right to liberty and the pursuit of happiness that is the bedrock promise of America from the Declaration of Independence to the 14th Amendment and the dream of all Americans. We're now just a month away from oral argument before the court on March 26, and we've never been closer to winning this case, but we need your help to reach the finish line. Support AFER's work by subscribing here on YouTube and by sharing this video with everyone you know. Spreading the word about this case is the most effective way to win people over to our side. You can also visit AFER.org to register your support, and you can also click to donate to AFER. At the American Foundation for Equal Rights, I'm Matt Baum. Thanks for watching.